You know, the studio logos at the beginning were sped up about twice the normal speed or so. I don't know why, it doesn't reflect the style or a theme of the movie, but... Couldn't you have just fast-forwarded the entire movie that way? The Turning is based on the 1898 Henry James novel, The Turn of the Screw. It stars Mackenzie Davis, who is hired to look after two orphan children at their parents' estate. But shortly after her arrival, weird things happen. You got your movie. In 2016, this movie started out as a passion project for Steven Spielberg, who was at first signed on as executive producer, but he pulled out when he saw the direction the studio was taking it. A smart move on his part, because this would have been the worst thing with his name on it. The turning is as boring, cookie-cutter, and scare-free as a horror movie can get. Take one wild guess what the first attempt at a scare is in this movie. Ding! A false jump scare. And yes, there are many more that follow. Some jump scares do turn out to be something, but it doesn't change how predictable they are. For the vast majority of the movie, they don't even amount to anything. It's just the nandy wandering around the haunted house and hearing banging on doors and seeing a sewing machine turn on by itself. Sometimes, it's just one short scene that accomplishes nothing. At a point where we already know that the place is haunted, the nanny is in the bathtub, and as her face is submerged, she suddenly sees an obscure figure appear above the water. She sits up quickly, sees nothing, and the movie just moves on to the next scene. It didn't progress anything, it didn't hint at anything we didn't already know, it wasn't scary, it's just obvious filler. This movie was written by Chad and Carrie Hayes, the writers of the first two Conjuring movies. In those movies, there was a story that progressed. There were lots of steps that the Warrens had to take to unravel the mystery. I would have thought the writers could bring something similar to this. And while the Conjuring movies may have had some horror cliches, this movie uses ones that should be dead. When the main character is being attacked and it looks like something is finally starting to happen, she wakes up in bed. It was just a dream. I thought that maybe that horror cliché was dead, but no, here it is again. Not once, even twice, but three times in one movie. I kid you not. And even when it gets to the third act and it's not a dream, the movie doesn't even stay focused. As the nanny is being terrorized in the basement, it randomly cuts to upstairs where the little girl and the housekeeper are playing chess for about five seconds, and then it just goes back to the basement. What was the point of that? The camera work is also unfocused. Not only is the color washed out, but there are these slight zoom-ins every once in a while that don't create any tension or anything. Like early in the movie, when the nanny turns around when she thinks she hears something, the camera ever so slightly zooms in behind her. Again, no point. The movie doesn't have any purpose with even so much as its setting. The book was written in 1898, but the movie's not set in that time, nor is it updated to the present. It takes place in 1994, but there's no good reason for it. At one point, there was even news coverage of the suicide of Kurt Cobain on TV. That didn't connect to anything. And though there is relatively new but established acting talent involved, none of it shows here. Mackenzie Davis is really bad in this, always talking through her teeth for some reason. She's not convincing at all. In fact, if you were to see one clip each of this and Terminator Dark Fate, you would think that this is the movie where she plays the robot. Finn Wolfhard, a very good young actor who is in It and Stranger Things, he's awful in this. The way that he tries to speak as though he's high and mighty over the nanny is so unnatural. The little girl is played by Brooklyn Prince, the young actress from The Florida Project, and she's better. I think she has a bright future ahead of her despite the turning. Now this movie would have easily disappeared from my memory the hour after I saw it. It would have been just a basic bad eye roller of a horror movie had it not been for the freaking ending. What I'll tell you is that it's like the twist in the third act of Breaking Dawn Part 2, except the entire movie, as if the movie up until that point wasn't worthless enough. And just to pour salt into the wound, the ending completely contradicts the beginning of the movie. It has got to be the worst ending since The Devil Inside. To be blunt, this is one of the worst horror movies I've ever seen. The acting is terrible, the editing is terrible, it's never scary, and it's 100% aimless, spending an hour and a half going absolutely nowhere while offering nothing to us while it stays in that one place. Scoring on the Factor Facts, The Turning gets a mere 10%. Can A Quiet Place Part 2 just get out already?
That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this review helpful. Like and share. Subscribe for more. This is Pop Culture. I'm Alex Pop.